this is the final test match of the Ancet Australia series and uh, it's been played between Australia and the West Indies. Australia 4-0 so far in the series. The West Indies the opportunity of uh, breaking that run and the Australians are looking at 15 in succession at test match level. The news is that uh, West Indies have won the toss and that's a big toss to win I reckon because uh, there will be plenty in the pitch as the game goes on. It uh, is described by Steve War as being a typical old style SCG pitch which means uh, there will be plenty of runs there. There have been centuries and double centuries made on this ground in the time during which uh, Steve War talks about and uh, you have the opportunity of more runs today. Wavell Hines is the man in your picture. He's been pushed up to bat at number two in the West Indies side. Number one is Sherman Campbell, who's been struggling so far on this tour. Doesn't seem as if he knows exactly how to get a run at the moment. Glenn McGrath. Taking strike for the West Indies, Sherman Campbell. Sharon Campbell playing a bit late, but looking to play a shot, I think. So maybe the message is with Wave Hines, his partner at the other end, we're down 4 0. Let's play some shots today. The one to toss, good bounce there for McGrath, and some seam back into the right hander. Of course, some, some concern early on. That's batsman coming down, so that would suggest, Michael, the moisture that was put in the pitch this morning, that ball holding up. Definitely, that will help the ball to grip, of course, a bit of lateral movement, but immediately we see Steve Waugh adjusting the field. There's a man down at third man. Well, he's gone for it, and that's the plan, obviously. He face some shots. Didn't quite get that up. Oh, he slips over as well, Sharon Campbell, but picks up two. When you're out of form, you don't pick the right ball. If you, if you can get a, have a bit of luck here and settle down, I think he's very nervous. It's obvious the way he started to play that he's pumped up. He's had a terrible series. And when you're a batsman out of form, there's no substitute for time in the middle. He's tried to do it defensively. It's, he's failed. Enormous pressure. Well, dropping in short. I'm not sure why. He's got a batsman who's struggled around about off stump. Far too short. Graf and the members end. Sherman Campbell goes for it and gets it away. Well played. The short played the full shot. Confidence builder. Good hook shot from Sharon Campbell. The height was what was very important here. We saw two earlier bouncers going well over his head. First time he attempted the hook shot, wasn't anywhere close to the ball. Second time he allowed it to go because he realized it was too high. This time the height, just about shoulder height, hit down on the ball. No problems there. That's the lineup. Andy Bickle unlucky getting five wickets in the Melbourne Tests. Now we'll get it to 12 men. The two spinners in the side, McGill and Miller, which you would expect at the Sydney Cricket Ground. Well balanced team. And it's well bowled and well played. Played late, soft hands. Stiff cord unpacked again. I think that's the length and the line that Steve Waugh is trying to tell Glenn McGrath he needs him to bowl. It's going to be Gillespie. He's off the mark. That's well run by Sherwin Campbell. Realised his partner needed a run. Good early call. Winning streak. There's Captain Stephen Moore. He's on a roll. It may have been a good pitch to win the toss on. So far it's uh, eight of the quick bowlers. I may see some turn early on, well there's some moisture there as well, particularly for the off spinner, Colin Miller. Oops, dropped him. Well, there you go. Westby, he dropped one in Melbourne, he's got one at the Sydney Cricket Ground as well. It's none for seven. Glenn McGraw continuing. Direct hit here would be close.
they won the toss this morning on a lovely day and uh, have decided that they want first use of the pitch and so far so good from a West Indian point of view oh that's close that's close well perhaps it was just slipping down the leg side uh, our commentary box is right behind the bowler's arm here great spot to commentate from it looked as if it was pretty slight, straight he's uh, perhaps it angled in a little bit pitching yes on off stump and just missing leg but only just missing leg I thought maybe it had bounced a little bit in this tacky surface and stood up and hit him above the knee roll too but it didn't um, I think that's pretty close I think that's straightened though. Oh, he's had a go at that one. Didn't quite get hold of it. Off the spot. Too quick for him, in fact. Back for the second, though. But this is positive cricket from Campbell. At least he's trying to get things moving here. It is. It's really good to see him have some fun playing his shots. You never know. He might start to time them and get away from the Aussies. Well, the umpire is um, covered as well these days. Um, a reverse slip camera. And uh, you can see the bowler in the background there, Stewie McGill, about to come in now. Straight into Langer. He's going to overpitch every now and again because he really is trying to toss it up there, trying to force a shot out of the batsman. and they get a single. No wicket for 70. Backward square there in screen. He's the only man out. Regulation mid on and short leg. So they want Sherwin and Campbell to swing across. And if Stuart Lilt McGill gets his length right, trouble. That's, um, that's the easier one to hit across uh, into that area for four. If it's a full toss, of course, no danger because it's not going to bounce and turn and uh, create a bit of a problem. That was nicely played. It was. We've seen it. We've seen the miss time and miss hit full tosses this series. If they get bold, they need to be put away. It was a top spinner, over pitched, timed, and placed for four. That's through the gap as well. That will go around, down to the boundary, will it? No, it won't quite make it. In comes the throw. Oh, and scampering there, both ends. Now we get the 24. Jason Gillespie continuing. Four slips, two gullies. Runs everywhere in front of the wicket. Sherwin Campbell. He's willing to play his shots today. Oh, it's a no, and if he hits the stumps direct, he's gone. He's missed. Well, there was an opportunity, and he doesn't often miss. In fact, it's Langer who um, hit uh, the stumps direct in Melbourne on one occasion. Big opportunity here for a run out. It was a great call by Wavell Hines to send Sherwin and Campbell back. And look at him stop and scrape up the middle of that wicket. The throw missed. It was a great call by Wavell Hines. Rather than him get run out. Better start for the West Indies at none for 29. Stuart McGill into the attack in the first hour. He's now bowling uh, his seventh over. there from Sherwin Campbell. That ball runs away very quickly down towards the ladies' stand. I must say, this uh, Sydney cricket ground outfield, they've done a lot of work, spent a lot of money on the ground, and it's been money well spent. I haven't seen the outfield look this good for a long, long time. Comes out of the front 
Stuart McGill's hand. He just pushes it out the front. It doesn't roll the fingers across the seam at all. It just slides out the front of his hand. And that one totally confused Sherwin Campbell. Sherwin Campbell's generally looking for the shorter one, the one to square cut. Only when Stuart McGill really bowls a full toss, that's the only time that, that Sherwin Campbell's looking to drive. People still coming in here at the SCG. A bit of room up on the hill and a bit in the Doug Walters stand. The rest of the ground is, uh, is pretty full. Well, that's an excellent shot right off the middle of the bat. And that's what we saw. Sean Campbell play one of these in Melbourne to get off the mark in the first innings. And that's about all we saw today. We're seeing a much more intent from Campbell. He's doing a lot of footwork there. The bat was nice and straight. And this is the Federation Test Match, the fifth in the Anset Series, Australia versus West Indies. That's the one that Campbell's been looking for. Anything short, he's pounced on it. This is fourth boundary, Sean Campbell. Definitely is looking to score more this morning. Yes, and no Colin Miller yet. I'm surprised we don't see Colin Miller short into the tackle. Probably from the Randwick southern end of the ground. That time going hard at it over the top of the slips. That's going to bring the 50 up for the West Indies. Not in convincing form, really. A fair bit of bat on this one, Sherwin Campbell. It looked to me like he was deliberately trying to lift the ball over the offside field. A bit of width, just threw the bat at it. No attempt to keep the ball on the ground. It's sailing over gully. Jimmy Adams has won, I think, the two big tosses in the series. Look at the Gabba, Wacker, and uh, the MCG. I don't really think the toss of the coin made a lot of difference in those matches, but those wickets did something for the entire match. Adelaide and Sydney. There's some more runs. We just get the two on this occasion. Sydney, from better wickets to bat on first and good wickets to win the toss on. It's the over bowl, number 53. No better sight in this cricket world than the SCG on uh, a cloudless day, nice temperature, and a full house. He's seven on the board now. The cricket fans of Sydney and New South Wales have thronged to War Park, hoping to see a very good contest. That's what they've seen this morning. 42 to Campbell, 13 to Hines. Australians seeking 15th win on the trot. West Indies seeking to stop them in their tracks. got that off the middle, he's hit it in the air productive shot again for Sherwin Campbell no way really you would say it's a good looking shot but it's productive He's been positive and he's getting runs. Not too many feelers in front of Square. Yeah. A nice strike. Uh, 
an interesting move. McGrath was awake to what Hind was doing, but he was just turning without much thought. Now Campbell has um, scored most of his runs on the offside. One good one down there, an off drive. And then he's been pushing around the onside as well. Was positive from his first delivery this morning, Sherwin Campbell. Most of the running between the wickets has been uh, pretty good. There was one chance where uh, there was a send back and uh, could have been a run out. It's 64 on the board with that loss. There's some good strokes coming from. Uh, Sherwin Campbell's bat today. Looks a completely different player at the moment, Sherwin Campbell. Just a bit of positive intent. Still wouldn't say perfect with his footwork. But a bit more positive intent. Bowlers have a different mindset when they are bowling to a batsman that's a bit more positive. And it has paid off. Good shot. First bouncer in a couple of overs, and Campbell got himself in a very good position. And again, he played the shot and was comfortable with the shot because of the height. You see that ball just about getting the shoulder height, not above the height of the shoulder, and so a lot more comfortable height at which to play that shot. He did well. They've uh, certainly started well. Campbell on 49, Babel Hines on 20. That's well played, Sherwin Campbell. He gets 50 with a nice little punch through cover. So he goes to 51, his first decent score of the summer, but a very courageous effort. <laughs> Made his way to the crease this morning. Tried to play some shots in the first over, mistimed and on drive, got two runs, but to settle down, this is a fine knock. Yes, the, uh, the only problem I've got with this field is that uh, there's a man at extra cover that uh, should be a lot straighter. So there we are, that's uh, where his runs have been scored, the 50 of them. Cracking shot through the slip cord, and that's four. Slashing away off the back foot. None for 79. Miller around the wicket to the left handed Wavel Hines. That could be his first boundary. In fact, it is just off the back foot, beautifully played. The over bowled. None for 83. All bowlers used today by Stephen Moore, McGraw, Gillespie, McGill and Miller. Andy Bickle, the 12th man. McGill coming into this team. What a sight. Looking down towards the Randwick end. Full house. Ideal conditions. Oh, great shot. Short. Cracked it away. Beautifully played Wavell Hines. Six runs off the over. None for 89. Miller continues. Wavell Hines scoring a beautiful boundary off that last delivery through the point region. He moves to 29. Campbell's on 57. Good shot that doesn't. Oh, it misses. Misfield. Westby not getting down, and that's four. Well, a little bit of pressure applied. Misfield start. Yes, there have been uh, one or two uh, little uh, mishaps in the field. And that certainly was one. There was an opportunity for a run out as well, which wasn't seized upon. It was played uh, just to his left, and uh, certainly didn't get into position to stop that one. Got a finger on it, and that's about it. 
And that's nice, that's touch. His feet are moving now, Sharon Campbell. Although as Faye is behind him, he's looking in very good touch. This is good cricket by the West Indies. The left and right hand combination working way behind two boundaries and since the luncheon break. And Sharon Campbell showing a bit of touch there. None for 96. What odds, Tony? None for 96. It's big odds, eh? Real big odds. And it could be a none for 100. Miller a fraction short and he's punished. Good cricket, West Indies. Brings up the 100 without loss on the first day. Joy for the West Indian batsman at last. Yes, that's very well done. Fourth, 100 open partnership in the last seven years for the West Indies, so it's of importance, apart from the 4 0 grubbing so far. As the bowlers are beginning to wonder, no doubt, what's going on. They've, um, certainly the fast men have bowled 11 overs apiece, McGraw and Gillespie. Uh, no wicket for. 28 and 23 respectively the spinners have had um, 9 and 7, McGill 9, Miller 7 oh great shot, that's four more we'll soon see one of these ships disappear For the first time really apart from a period in the Adelaide Oval Australian bowlers on the back foot shaking their heads no longer the five slips and two gullies and whatever no bad pad a very good start back to the more orthodox uh, type of start. That's him to come. Jimmy Adams, Brian Lara, young Samuels who played very well in Adelaide and the MCG. Young Marlon Samuels, he looks to be the find of the tour with the bat for the West Indies. Oh, a little inside edge. And it races away for four. Not a chance. The angle, got an edge. Luck running with the batsman at last for the West Indies. Yeah, it's very difficult for wee keepers. Uh, the change of direction of the inside edge is such that uh, they'd be lining the ball up and then all of a sudden the change in direction away he goes and he was about uh, well, perhaps three or four inches off the ball. Would have been a great catch but uh, never quite got there. That's the line up. Seven batsmen including Gilchrist and the bowlers. Or 12th man. He's got a few part timers there. Uh, Ricky Ponting um, has been known to create a few problems with these little medium paces. Oh, he smashed that one through the offside field. Boy, and they're not bothering to run there. That was uh, outside off stump, flayed away through to the fence for four. Good shot. That's a good pitch. That's the way the West Indians normally play. The confidence is lifting. One for 122. The West Indies, 43 overs bowled. Two spinners on at the moment, so we'll certainly get some overs in now. Australia could well have bowled about 50 overs by the halfway stage in this match, or this day's play, should I say. That's 50 for Wavell Hines. He's coming back for two. Coming back comfortably, that's well played. Second 50 for the series for Wavell Hines. Fifth of his career. Second against Australia. This one's been a battle. It hasn't been easy. Five fours, most of those coming since lunch. Two hours and 40 minutes compiling that. Sherwin Campbell's been a great partner for him. Oh. None for 124. That's the site out to the east of the ground. Box Studios. Something I wouldn't recommend, I can tell you that. 
He might reappear in a moment. Yeah, there he is. Right next to that, the West Indies are none for 124 out in the middle of the SCG. Doing it very nicely. Starting to get the run rate up now. Run rate's heading up towards three. 2.81 to be exact at the moment. That one's beaten everyone. There's no sweeper in the right-handed Campbell either, so he'll probably get three. I'm just not getting the right line on this one. And we've seen throughout this series the West Indies miss these opportunities, but Sherwin Campbell today really got his eye on the ball. He's wanting the ball to come to him, and he's got enough bat on that to be very effective. 47 overs bowled here at the SCG. West Indies 134 without loss. Two and a half centuries to the opening batsman. Oh, the first loose shot from Wave Hines for a while. He's got it away. May even get three. Up. Certainly was a wild swing, though, from Wavell Hines. Lucky to get away with it. It's great to see them erring on the side of aggression, though. The bowler will know he's got his work cut out for him, even next ball after this. It was perfectly bowled, just a little bit full again. There was a big gate left by Hines, and he was looking to go down the ground and end up pulling it across the mid-wicket. But it was the right attitude. Stuart McGill won't mind it, though. On that occasion, the bowler was lucky away with one. Big full toss. Just went for the single. Oh! I don't know how that's missed off stump. Mabel Hines made a real mess of this. It was really a full toss. Drifted in a little bit, but he played all around. The ball must have gone perilously close to the stumps. Once again, that head of Wavell Hines falling over, losing his balance. Colin Miller almost getting a wicket with that full ball. Oh, it's chance, chance this time. Yeah. Well, a mix up again. Calls of a yes and then a big no. In the end, Wavell Hines. Gets back, none for 139. I think this replay is just that's gone just to Ricky Ponning's right. There he is, he's got about two steps to his right, he's got the ball. Mabel Hines got two yards back, down and just got back. Oh, he's hit that well though. That's a cracking shot. Well, there's that drive we've been talking about through the offside. On this occasion, Wavell Hines got there and absolutely smashed it through the offside. Just walks away, walks to the right of screen after this shot, not to his partner. Basically saying to himself, come on, that's what you're trying to do. Get your head back down. Play like that. That's real Calypso, that. Most of his batsmen uh, in the pavilion haven't had the opportunity to do this too much during the series. Sit around. And watch a big partnership. No wonder they're smiling. Generally, it's um, been a lot of crisscrossing between there and uh, the picket fence. Yeah! And uh, now, yeah, as Darrell Harris said, yes, yeah. so there's just a moment where Sherwin Campbell wasn't sure if uh, he played that into the pitch. I think you'll find that Sherwin Campbell hit the ball and hit the pitch as well. He took, he took a fraction of a pace there, so there's no doubt, and he's hit the ground as well. So he's just waited. McGill knew he saw it come straight at the face of the bat, and so did Darrell Hare, the umpire. And Campbell, just for a moment, wasn't certain because of the ball striking the pitch quite firmly. Very good innings. Court and Bob McGill, 79. One for 147. Jimmy Adams now needs to uh, play in a similar vein. Oh! Almost through him. Here in the last test. 
almost gone first ball in this one Sherwin Campbell was loath to drive Stuart McGill throughout his uh, innings mainly because he doesn't like to leave his crease and eventually the spinner tempted him into playing the drive shot and he hit a return catch that's what the bowler wants to do he wants to make the batsman play a shot that he's not comfortable with and that's what brought about the success that's worth asking no shot played Six to Wavell Hines. Jimmy Adams not yet off the mark. That's a good shot. No one at mid-wicket. And the left-hander really shouldn't uh, allow a leg spinner to bowl without a mid-wicket. Not in the deep. A beautiful short-arm jab. It wasn't all that short. McGill for a moment might have thought he was in with a chance. But a bit of bounce there was uh, to Wavell Hines' benefit. It was only a short armour. Oh, nice. Now, McGill won't mind that. He's uh, left the outfield. Steve Hoare has left the outfield vacant. Look confident uh, when driving at the leg spinner. On that occasion, he was attempting to defend, but it's gone right through him. That's good cricket from Stuart McGill. He's defeated Campbell with flight, and that one seemed to be from the naked eye to be a bit flatter. Drew, drew him into the drive and had him playing, well, almost a nothing shot. Almost a change of mind. And beautifully bowled by Stuart McGill. Defeated him in the flight again. That's twice with two batsmen. He's done that. One to the right hand and one to the left. Out for 70 and two for 152. Brian Lara has come in and asked for two legs. And he won't mind coming in in this situation. With the two spinners bowling. And immediately off the mark. Good over there from Stuart McGill. Wavell Hines being bowled. Wavell Hines really uh, yorked himself. Just basically uh, played over the top of a full toss. Yeah. He's a very aggressive player. Particularly uh, against the spinners when he first comes in. Let's them know that he's not going to be dominated. Oh. Fine touch on that one. Another long chase for Jason Gillespie. Seems to be uh, running just a little more freely in this match than what we saw him in Adelaide. So that's what a captain's looking for. Try and get the uh, the match up in your favour. He's certainly got that as far as the stats are concerned. With McGrath bowling to Lara and Jimmy Adams. There's a quick intake of breath in the uh, commentary box here. I don't know whether Jimmy did the same thing out there. That looked as though it was quite close to off stump. That's worth a shout. Adam Gilchrist liked the look of it. 
Now he was right in line. He certainly hadn't headed down the leg side. Glenn McGrath certainly has the ability to bring the ball back into the left hand, the bowling right arm over. We just showed you the LBW shout. That one came back in, pitched in line and straightened. Two straight, that one. Right, now that's uh, 3,000 runs for Jimmy Adams. Fourteen half centuries and six centuries for Jimmy Adams. And did he keep that one down? Running away down towards the boundary, actually pretty well played. He got into position nice and early there and got it right off the middle of the bat. Not a great deal of bounce there for Glenn McGrath. And those are the balls that the batsmen are much better off pulling and hooking. That height, not even up to shoulder height. Very easy to put those away. Once you get yourself in the right position, that is. Perhaps eight, nine inches above the waist. Very comfortable height. This is the first time that he has played in four consecutive test matches. He's had a lot of problems, uh, a fair bit of bad luck as well. And um, he's had those, uh, that run of test matches interrupted by injury. Didn't play in the first test match, but uh, from the second test match onwards, has been in the wickets. Oh, that's close. Yes, he's given him. Now then, did it pitch just outside leg stump? Well, we know we'll establish that. Or was McGraw, as usual, bang on target and just straightening it down the line? Took a while to give it out. There was no rush about that. He gave it a lot of thought, the umpire. But eventually put his finger up. Very close call. Very, very close call. To get the batsman out, but right arm over, you should be pitching in line with the stumps and straightening. Very unlikely that you'll see the ball going towards the slip cord and then the ball pitching in line and still being able to hit the stumps. Rudy Kurtzen took a very long time. Well, he's gone anyway. It's three for one, seven to four. Marlon Samuels, the new batsman, eight, 19 years of age and uh, having a pretty good time at the moment. A good batting average for a youngster. He's played well in this series, uh, brought out uh, here as a replacement. 60 and a 40 in the Melbourne Test match. Last man out in the second innings, McGraw to him. Oh, that's out. No, he says no. Perhaps it was just slipping down the left side. Definitely going down the leg side. Marlon Summers was quick to push that left leg of his towards the leg, the leg side, but the movement of the ball, you would have seen that it would have been missing. Have a good look at this. Marlon Samuels coming across, ball pitching just about off stump or fractionally outside off stump, hitting him in line with leg stump. Well, the movement that it has already done, that should take it past leg stump. There was Glenn McGrath saying the same thing. Now, that was a good decision by umpire Goodson. And the question is, was this one a good decision? And we'll come back and um, have a look at it in a second. At the moment, the score three down for 174. Laura, this time having to wait as the field uh, has changed a little bit. It was Glenn McGraw actually went all the way over to the bowler <laughs> to have a little chat to him. This slowed things up a little bit for Laura, made him wait a little longer. And nicely played, driven down the ground. It's running away, and Glenn McGraw is going to have to do the chasing. Marlon Samuels, just 19 years of age. Beaten, oh, and he gets away with it. A good edge, didn't carry. Maybe Gilchrist could have dived. Gets a boundary, the over bowled. Three for 184. Well, I was not using his feet, it's just 
playing for Nacris, very watchful. He's on 17. It's a 70 second over. Hasn't scored since the tee break. He's faced 16 deliveries. Has now through cover for four. A lot of players, when they go into their shell like that 16-ball period, then miss time the first chance they want to take. This one, full toss. And that was the problem for McGill in Adelaide. Timed and placed. Wonderful crowd, full house. New Book Sydney Cricket Ground. The A was in magnificent condition. Completely relayed the outfield. New pitch area. Just a little push down the mid on. Pick up two. Well, here's another example of Marlon Samuel's lack of urgency at the moment. It almost surprised himself that there was a run here. Plays a shot. Oh, there it is. There is a gap there. Oh, found it. And now let's jog through for two. Last over, there were two, possibly three balls that were able to be hit for four which he got no runs for gone for it just got it away a full shot we had mid wicket they pick up two well, that was in the air it's gone wide of mark war at first step that'll run all the way to the boundary not out of the middle but four just the same. I think we saw there a very good example of uh, Lara being in a defensive frame of mind. And he got the bad ball and he was almost surprised by it. That's what tends to happen. The feet aren't moving quite as quickly because you're not uh, thinking about scoring runs. And because of that, he was off balance. Oh. Well, that one's out of the middle. That's a better shot. That one's right out of the middle of the bat. It's the late cut. This time he won't get four. A much more confident looking shot. That three brings up the uh, 200 for the West Indies. Just three down. Oh, and Samuels this time gets it through as well. And that will go to the boundary as well. So this is turning out to be a very good over for the West Indies. Three cut shots, 11 runs in three balls. One of the great things about this uh, ground, when it's in good condition, the ball travels very quickly. So if you can find the gaps, and on that occasion, Marlon Samuels hitting the ball into the pitch just next to him. Just starting to put the foot down at the moment, Lara and Samuels. Bogged down since T. One's not off the middle either, but there'll be more runs. Michael Slater gives chase. And we'll just pick it up inside. Some good signs now for the West Indies. Much more aggressive in the last 10 minutes or so. Lara and Samuels. Quite a few deliveries uh, well wide of off stump, and they've taken the opportunity to get into a stroke playing mood. Three for 208. West Indies. Stuart McGill continuing. That's a nice shot. Square drive. Just open the face there, Brian Lara. Just get that. That's a good piece of fielding as well. Gone. Mark Moore. Taking a very good catch at first slip. Stuart McGill's got his man by tossing it up. Mark Moore again has taken an excellent catch at first slip. Well, Brian Lara really has brought about his own downfall the way he's played after T. He tries to square drive the leg spinner. Mark Moore's got that just in the end of the fingers. Lara actually hung around and I think may have even asked him if he did catch it. 
But Lara likes to square drive, and uh, I think that's a mistake against Stuart McGill. He should be trying to hit that through the covers rather than pass point. He's found the edge, and McGill has got his third victim. West Indies 4 for 210. Ramnaresh Sarwan makes his way to the wicket. Running at six for the West Indies. More reports he is a much better player than what he showed so far. A little bit of pressure now though. Two slips in, two bat pads. Oh! Stuart McGill's got three wickets, including the big one, Brian Lara. Once again, Mark War, the catcher at first slip. Wasn't just me though, it looked like the top spinner. Mara has Brian, as Ian Chappell said, trying to open the face, but look at Mark War. Caught that in between two fingers. And even after he caught it, didn't worry about putting it in the in the meat of the hands. Oh! Oh, and a swing and a whiz. Tell you what, you're not going to see the new ball for a while now with uh, Lara out of the way. You've got Sarwan, new player who's been struggling on this tour, and if he's going to keep trying to drive balls like that without leaving his crease, then he's going to be in big trouble. So Stuart McGill puts a lot of side spin on the ball, which is well suited to this uh, SCG pitch. Brian Lara really doesn't try to drive the leg spinner uh, much in front of the wicket. He loves to hit him square the wicket. And I think uh, that's brought about his downfall on this occasion. Sharp catch just grabbed by Mark War. Well, that's very close indeed. Darrell Hare says yes, that is out. That looked like the one out of the front of the hand from Stuart McGill. It's skidded straight on. Remner SR1's feet went nowhere. And Darrell Hare said that is close enough for me. Well, the West Indies now in danger of uh, just absolutely squandering this good opening partnership, playing back to the skidding top spinner and uh, not really coming far forward at all. Absolutely plumb. So Stuart McGill has four. Sarwan has another duck to his name. The West Indies have slumped to five for 210. Well, Ridley Jacobs makes his way to the middle. He's at the non-strikers in at the moment. Oh. Paul Miller continues from the Randwick end. Sorry, the Paddington end, should I say. A couple of quick wickets. Steve Raw and the Australians. Out the front of the hand, that one from Stuart McGill doesn't turn. Straight on. Hits the pad, and that's Plum LBW. Well, that's a nice shot from Marlon Samuels. Just a little bit wide from Miller. A beautiful cover drive. That's the four from the over. Stuart McGill's going to try one round the wicket. Marlon Samuels, and Marlon Samuels just checking out now where that rough is outside his leg stump. Moves the side ball as well. Just looking down there at the rough. Worry too much about the rough. Just heaves it over mid on. And the last ball before Drinks goes for four. It's nicely played. West Indies five for 219. Five for 219. And the West Indies uh, not quite deep in trouble yet, but they're certainly approaching that position. Ramner S. Sar one out for a duck. Samuels is still there on 21, as he has been uh, on many occasions when we've been watching in recent times. And Ridley Jacobs is on one. Samuels and Jacobs, the rescue mission pair. Might seem like Mission Impossible sometimes uh, to them. And the bowling figures, McGill has four for 73 and McGrath one for 43. Another case of pace bowling and over the wrist spin doing the job. Miller, no wicket for 58 or for 20. So five down for 2.19. The run rate 2.67. These two have only just got together. Miller will be very keen to get himself uh, a wicket here. He's uh, he's getting a little bit of spin. He's got a very attacking field. Two new batsmen at the crease. 
Oh, and um, he really was trying to get that one away. Wide of mid on. It hit the front edge of the bat and only just beat mid off. So that was a very good over from uh, Miller. And the score now 5 for 222. So 84 overs have been bowled. Yeah! Oh, and yes, up she goes. Big appeal from everybody. I think you'll find there might have been some bat in that one. The Australian players cannot believe it. Umpire Kutzen giving the benefit of the doubt to the batsman. Very difficult, uh, those bat pads. You've got to be certain. Let's see if we can pick it up. Well, it uh, certainly didn't hit the bat because the bat was tucked away behind the pad. Might have flipped the glove. But it certainly didn't hit the bat. Yes, I think uh, it goes up onto the thumb. You can see the movement of the thumb on the uh, left hand there as the ball goes past it. Uh, for me, that was the second noise, and uh, so that was definitely out. But uh, again, the noise as the ball just clips the top of the thumb. It doesn't necessarily have to be... Uh, it's not very really loud. And uh, it perhaps is that uh, umpire Kutzen didn't hear it all. He has a mix-up. Well, I'm not at all convinced that uh, that hit the glove. One thing I am convinced about, though, is that the match referee might have a good hard look at that with players rushing at the umpire. Now, there the ball hits the pad, no doubt about that. Now, the thumb seems to me to be behind the bat there. So I doubt very much if that is a movement of the thumb with the, the ball getting anywhere near it. I think it's just a, a thing that he does. But this is the point I was uh, making about players rushing at Darling, rushing at uh, the umpire. That is specifically laid down as being beyond the pale. Yes, this is... Um, you're dead right about that. So, uh, that's what the Australian players thought. And uh, they certainly did go up. And uh, it would surprise me if uh, the match referee, A.C. Smith, wasn't... Um, I never talked to one or two of them. I know that uh, if umpire Orchard had have been out there, he, he's one of those umpires that just uh, really does get angry when everyone charges down the other end, especially the wicketkeeper. Into the gap, and that'll be four. Yes, that was a bad delivery. He hasn't bowled many of them, but that was short and gave the batsman plenty of time to line up a gap. Not quite sure... Uh why Stuart McGill has gone around the wicket to Samuels. He's bowling well at him from over the wicket. I was just looking at the, uh, the field and just noticed that um, Glenn McGraw is quite straight here. And what they're trying to do is to get him to hit it over there. And to close the face of the bat on the ball and then uh, with that little bit of spin I'm hoping that it'll go straight back down the pitch. There we go, in the air and oh, once again well, that's the second time that's happened. That's very lucky. Yes. 87 overs bowled. Nagamutu, the uh, leg spinner, brought into the side. He's next in, followed by the three fast bowlers. Yes, so just looking at uh, the snickometer here, that's the pad, the thud, and then uh, is there another one? That's the question. It goes through, and there's definitely another noise there, according to our snickometer. Both uh, thuddy looking noises because of the pad and the glove as opposed to the bat. That's certainly the pad that is uh, a thud. Then well, the ball is on its way. Still not convinced. <laughs> yeah, side leg stump and oh, 
They've caught it. He's gone. Well, five wickets to Stuart McGill. And uh, that one was a bit of a bonus. I was uh, starting to look down towards the uh, Bill O'Reilly stand. But uh, somehow it's, uh, it's obviously hit the bat and um, hit uh, his leg or something and then just popped up on the onside. Look at how wide it was. Um, it's obviously hit something, perhaps the back of the bat, and just bobbed up to forward short leg. We have to slow that one right down to see uh, what happened there. A very confident um, umpire there giving Marlon Samuels out. Caught by Langer off the bowling McGill. It's six down for 235. Mahendra Nagamutu, a left-hand batsman. He also is the nephew of Alvin Kali Kalicharan. So there's cricket in his veins. Oh! Right, now uh, we've um, had a bit of a debate about one decision. Let's see if we can find out what this hit, if anything. Now then, did that uh, was that a case of the glove on the way up? It certainly uh, deflected off a few things. I, I think it may well have been uh, something other than the glove. But, uh, well, it's all happening out there at the moment. There certainly two noises again. I don't think there's any doubt about that. But a cheer for Stuart McGill. Five wickets in the bag for him, and he's not finished yet. Been a very good spell of bowling from McGill. And it's cost him four. He's kept the ball up to the bat today, much more than uh, was the case in Adelaide. He's had the batsman coming at him today, having to play off the front foot for much of the time. Every so often he pulls one down a bit short. And an, LB, an LBW shout at the start for a flick of the pad perhaps, and then the stumping. Ridley Jacobs says, looks so uncomfortable out there, you wouldn't think he's the man who's been the hero all the way through. He's hardly got anything in the middle of the bat today. Gilchrist has got him. Yes, he's out of his ground right. Gilchrist realises straight away, he never got back. Certainly, if he did, it was far too late. Gilchrist has uh, started the celebration there, and uh, up goes the finger there of the square leg umpire so Ridley Jacobs in a desperate effort to heave that one away to mid-wicket missed it dragged his back foot Gilchrist was there to do the job again off the bowling of McGill McGill now 6 for 83 and the West Indies 7 for 240 we've arrived at um, the lower order here now the bowlers arriving and uh, the West Indies have got off to such a great start of squandering that uh, advantage we won the toss decided to bat first and uh, well an opening partnership of 146 and here they are now seven for 240 oh, a big appeal for oh, no, he's given him out he's given him out umpire hair has raised his finger long long time he took there well this is turning out to be a great day for Stuart McGill. Another one to him. They were certainly up in the air. Very confident appeal for LBW, the keeper and the bowler. And uh, umpire Hare took a while over this one and then raised his finger. So yet another West Indian has succumbed to McGill. Let's see where it pitches. Outside the off stump. Spins back in. And, uh, well, I suppose the question is, was he playing... A, a shot at that, I think he probably was. I think uh, that probably hit him outside the line. Well, he's been accompanied off the ground uh, by a duck, which makes it 27 in all now for the West Indies in the series. An all-time record, it's 8 for 240. Colin Stewart is on the hat-trick. Yes, and... Um, <laughs> Well, this could, this could well be a hat-trick. <laughs> the West Indies tail are not renowned for hanging around. Darren Gock took a hat-trick on this day two years ago. McGill was part of it. Wouldn't he like to uh, reverse that situation? Right, the batsman taking his time, just wandering around. They've got uh, two, four, six, seven... Australians are all around the bat, if you include the wicketkeeper, here we go. 
and nicely played. Forty thousand eight hundred eighty fans at the Sydney Cricket Ground. A magnificent day's play. Eight for two four one. McGill. It's charged and hit well down the ground. That's a good shot. Nagamuta using his feet and hitting straight. Well played. It's a good shot from Nagamuto. Leg spin a little bit coming back into him as a left-handed batsman. Less of a risk for him to be using his feet. Gone again. That's a better shot. Time that's superbly hitting over middle on. It's well played. Been an example there for the top order players to get down and get to the pitch of the ball. Or try to hit straight through the line. Good shot. Yes, hitting as straight as possible again. Slightly with the spin, but not looking to hit it through the mid-wicket region. Well timed. Full toss, and he doesn't put it away. Gets a single. Nagamuto batting well on that over. Eight for 250. And very happy New Year crowd at the Sydney Cricket Ground. Wonderful crowd. Good test match. Colin Miller will consider himself a bit unlucky in this spell, in this test match so far. This is now his 27th over. He had done a pretty good job, though, apart from take wickets. Only six to nine runs coming off all those overs. It's out. He's got one. Caught at that point. Driving in the rough. Nagamutu caught. Noor gets a wicket. Nine for 252. I don't think anyone would begrudge Colin Miller that wicket. Certainly has bowled a lot better than his figures would suggest. Finally gets one. Nagamoto looking to drive out of that rock just outside the off, the off stump of the left-hander. Not near enough to the pitch of the ball to be in total control. The ball just sliding off to backward point. Michael Slater taking a pretty simple catch there. It's 9 for 252. Courtney they're singing, used to be Lily Lily, now it's Courtney Courtney. I don't think you'll be doing that much damage with the back door, Bill. <laughs> well, for Colin Miller, he picks up a wicket and has bowled well, spun the ball away from the left hand as he troubled Jacobs. Put him under all sorts of pressure today. McGill picked him up. That was a well deserved wicket. A left handed driving. At the ball in the rough, a little bit of turn, an outside edge, and Slater took the catch. Good bowling. Nagamuto had the right idea, he went for it, sliced it away, a simple, straightforward catch. He's gone for 12, and it's 252 for 9. Could see the dust as that ball landed in the rough area. First wicket for Colin Miller. Certainly deserved that wicket. Well taken, but no bat. Very well caught. Silly point very close. 96 overs bowled so far. Miller continues. Courtney Walsh gets it away somewhere down the final leg. The stumps are knocked over. Gilchrist probably not. There's no appeal. What will be the call here? Buys of the call. Only if Colin Miller was trying to slant a Yorker in here with Kurt Ward. It certainly was full in length. And Bill Chris perhaps going for the stomping down the lake side. Didn't gather. Catch! Well, Gill's trying hard for this eighth wicket. Just can't pitch it in the right spot. So the final ball coming up. Six o'clock here at the Sydney Cricket Ground. It's been a super day's play. Stumps on the first day, the West Indies up the winning toss, nine for 256. A magnificent day for everybody concerned. McGill seven for 92, Campbell 79, Hines 70, the stars. But 
all know I'd suggest it's been Stuart McGill's day. A leg spinner on the first day, taking seven for 92 off 35 overs, a magnificent effort.